support builds in Destiny are considered a rare commodity for the many, as their usages for higher tier content such as raids or nightfalls are welcoming and impressively effective for keeping the whole team alive. However, they are easily overlooked as most content isn't strict enough for a specific role for them to flourish in. Plus, DPS is the absolute key to really survive 90% of the game. So with that being said, can support healer builds still fit into the game? Yes, 100%. Their usage may be limited over DPS, but their everlasting effectiveness for getting through content quickly and safely is remarkable, and I'll show you how it is a very effective build for all to use. Greetings everyone, Freedy here here and welcome back to another Destiny 2 build video for this week's content. I hope everything's going well on your event, as today's build is going out to those who want to support their teammates as best as possible, while still providing a decent level of DPS in all content. This will be a titan focused build as we will be making full use of the Phoenix Cradle exotic and fully decking it out with the Warman Cells, our exotic hand cannon and tons of grenades which will provide one of the best fighting medic builds that any team can have on the hand. So starting things off, the subclass of today's pick will be the Code of the Siegebreaker Solar class to make use of the sunspots and to also maximise the Phoenix Cradle exotic to its full potential. Now if you have been a long time subscriber or lurker on my channel, then you should be aware of the build that I did many months ago, going over the main benefits and effectiveness that Phoenix Cradle and Siegebreaker both offer. In short, when we activate our solar abilities such as Sol Invictus or Mortar of Blast and get a kill with them, we get a chance to proc a sunspot via the Sun Warrior that provides a vast increase to our grenade and melee recovery and also allows our sunspots to last longer and also increase the damage we do. On its own, it's pretty great for pure DPS focus against bosses or clean out areas with too many mobs. Now, combine this with the Phoenix Cradle Exotic trait, and you can single handedly buff your whole teammates for the entirety of the content you're in. And we can also further increase the duration of some warrior, but this will also affect all of our teammates, not just us, as long as they pass through it. That's the general catch. For all of this to work and to benefit from unlimited power, grenade and melee regen at your disposal, your teammates will need to just pass through your sunspots as well. But don't worry if you can't do it via abilities all the time, as you can proc sunspot via sun warrior via your weapons, so your options are fairly open here. For grenades, all three grenade types can work well depending on what type of mob and content you use them in. For example, Thermite grenades are great for their damage and duration for all content, but are terrible on maps that have uneven ground, with the same being said for the incendiary grenades as well, with them being great for wide and quick damage. And then fusion grenades are, well, 50-50. They're great for a singular target, but they're not that great in terms of damage. Personally, I would recommend you stick with the Thermite grenades for their damage and duration. For the weapons, we're going to go with the Illumina in the primary slot, with our secondary being the Solar Marty's Retribution, and Heavy being either a rocket launcher or machine gun of choice. With Lumina in the primary slot, my role as a support focused character can be increased further while still being able to put in a decent amount of DPS against minor or major. This hand cannon compared to the many others is quite unique, with its exotic trait offering you the ability to both heal and buff allies and yourself with a 35% damage increasement when the buff is active. Plus, when collecting noble rounds, it can stack up to times 5 on your end, so you can spam fire your teammates to give them a constant buff until it runs out. Unfortunately, the buffs does not stack on top of each other, as it just simply resets itself after each hit, which still isn't that much of a big issue. With this fitting in the role perfectly, and with Phoenix Cradle also active, we can guarantee that our team or just second player can be the main damage dealer at all times. Secondly wise, we have the Marty's Retribution Grenade Launcher, which we will be using to create Warmind Cells via the Wrath of Rasputin mod. The weapon can't be obtained anymore as it was a last season weapon, although I do believe it will be reintroduced again in the near future, but there's no ETA as to when. The weapon is perfect for clearing out pathways of ads in a singular blast with its unique frame type, I could do pretty well against ultras and bosses, though I would advise against it if you don't have that much of a choice. Like I mentioned it earlier, with it combined with the Wrath of Rasputin mod to proc all my cells via serious splash damage, you'll be guaranteed to proc cells this way if by chance you don't have any ability energy left over. And also when combined with the firewall grenades, you can amp up the amount of damage you do and carnage you do against a large group of ads on your own. So really, it's a win-win situation for you. 
My version now comes with the Demolitionist perk, which means I will get Grenade Energy back per kill. And when combined with some Warrior's ability regen, you're going to stay very, very toasty throughout the whole of your adventure. And then lastly, your Heavy will simply come down to either a Rocket Launcher of your choice, but ideally with Cluster Bomb for extra damage, or the 7th Seraph Machine Gun with Clown Cartridge, Raw Pool, or Field Prep. To be quite honest, your Heavy should be a weapon that can output damage against bosses effectively and quickly, as your primary and secondary won't have the capabilities to do so. So, instead of going into the simple grain of what many other players tend to choose, such as grenade launchers with spike nades, why not go with something like a rocket launcher with tracking and cluster, or the 21% delirium machine gun which I do recommend you try and grind out, or even a simple sword is really good for PvE damage. Now for the stats, we are going to cover 4 areas this time, as we can be flexible in how you want to dedicate your stats into specific areas. So we have recovery at 60 and resilience up to 50 ranges, as they don't need to increase further unless you want faster recovery for taking on the high level content, or if you wish to create loads of barricades with little cooldown involved. But please remember, for any build you go for, don't max your resilience out as you don't gain any benefits going higher, unless you plan to play Titan and just want faster barricades. Now discipline stat is at 50 which is a appropriate level, as having some warrior, demolitionist and mods such as enhanced bomber is plenty enough to fully get your goodies back in mere seconds. I would only recommend you increase this level higher if you don't have a weapon with demolitionists like mine, or if you have mods that increase your grenade regen rates. And then lastly we have the intelligence stat which has been left alone in many of my builds as it wasn't that much of a important stat until now. Now at 50 we will get a cooldown of around 4 minutes 31 which isn't too great on paper. But when combined with the ability to spam grenades with our high grenade stat and then combine that with the enhanced ashes to ashes mod. You can see that at this level, it's not really that much of an issue to worry about now. But I would recommend if you have the stats available, to push into the challenge stat by all means. So it can come in handy later on, or if you generally are happy with your current stats, it's best to just maximize the stat in general. Now next for the armor, you will need 4 season 9 or 10 armor pieces to slot in the Warmind mods. They will need to be solar and preferably need to cover the head, arms, chest and titan mark, as the legs will be taken by the exotic. If you have the season pass, the armor provided are the best ones to work with as they come with high stats and 6 free armor slots to begin with, and they're also solar, which works in favor for you to add in any extra mods, specifically the solar mod, and then you just go from there. Exotic wise, as mentioned we will be working with the Phoenix Cradle with solar affinity for rocket launcher related mods. Nothing more needs to be explained with the exotic, except that this will be enhancing our subclass abilities times 10, and must be equipped to get the full benefits, even though you can get away with creating a build without it, just you won't have the same benefits otherwise. With this all explained, here are the mods you're going to need to have. Head, Intelligent and Fire Team Medic mod, Arm, Recovery and Rage of the War my mod, Chest, Inferno Whip and Burning Cells mod, Leg, Recovery and Rocket Launcher mod, Mark, Concussive Dampener, Enhanced Bomber, Enhanced Ashes to Assets, and Wrath of Asputum mod. Everything combined now will allow you to live out your role as a fighting medic on the field, with this crazy effective setup that in the most heated situations, can lead you and your team to victory with ease. But there will be mistakes occurring every now and then. So what makes the build great you say? Well think of it like this, you'll participate in a large scale event to where you have your objectives that need to be protected and you can do your part perfectly fine, but your teammates keep dying, or they just don't have enough firepower to back them up. That's where you come in with your primary and subclass abilities, as you can both buff, heal, defend and fight back all at once, while standing your own ground and being the team player that you should be. Well yeah, this is how it's all going to pay off for you and the team, as simply passing through one of your sunspots will quickly replenish your abilities, which in turn increases your DPS overall. But the real magic that comes with this is that it can buff my teammates further with Noble Rounds and grant them a whopping 35% damage increasement. So not only are they getting their abilities replenished at a high rate, but they are also getting a damage buff at the same time. And the health is also being constantly topped up and regen to prevent further death, thanks to the Warman Cells of Fire Team Medic. And the other mod's constant damage as well is also aiding me in my conquest of keeping my team together. Pretty much, if you play your cards right, you can prevent your teammates from dying and practically become invincible in the process. 
Do you remember that this is just half the build working as intended? We then have the War Mind Cells which are another beast to deal with, which are a build within a build, and are effective for causing mass extinction to the general mobs in the area. And then mods such as Enhanced Ashes Assets will play favourably when going to town with your super, as super now will be lasting twice as long than normal, and the amount of sunspots you create can mean you can move around rats freely, instead of wasting your super energy by staying in one spot all the time. The build is the type of build best suited for those that want to help, but help more in the grander scheme of things. Instead of you doing all the DPS, you can now in fact provide buffs and support to your teammates instead, so that they can do all that for you, while you simply just keep them alive. And the one great thing to know about this build is that 1. You don't need to play Warlock with a ton of grace to do this. Plus 2. It benefits everyone and not just you. So you can take this into the new set of events of Grandmaster Nightfalls, and you'll still come out on top as you're solely supporting your team to survive. But of course, there's a catch to playing as a medic and a support build, and many of you here would have played these type of roles in other games before, so you should be fully aware of the risks behind them. For example, everyone will be relying on you to keep up with them and to make sure you don't slack behind when boss damage phases may kick in, as if you're keeping them alive and buff, then of course they're going to be annoyed that you can't fill out your own role. Another issue which I've mentioned is that you may struggle with DPS against bosses and some enemies. Now although your super lasts twice as long which means more ongoing damage, plus one my cells being propped all the time can increase damage further by the tenfold, you'll still have the issue to when you're not in your super phases, as you only have your grenades, melee and heavy to damage a boss, since your primary and secondary won't be effective enough, unless the mob you're facing is ground base and that's still 50-50. This in many ways slightly causes concern if you run this build in a higher turn nightfall, as your role will be strictly reduced down to support only until you get the necessary items to fight back. In lower level content, this isn't anything to worry about as long as you have an effective team who know what they're doing, and also have good weapons, but in higher tier content, you may need to think about switching around with your weapons and such. Beneficially, I can see a lot of PvE focused players who want to support their teammates or friends make good use of this build with some changes here and there to fit their playstyle more. In regards of usage, higher and lower tier content with 2-4 players max is where it will shine the most in, but 6 player content can work as well, although smaller groups are better, as everyone is more tight knit. Overall, a marvellous build that can be brought into any content of your choosing, and if you've ever wanted to play a main key player in your team survival, then alternatively, this build here is the best in terms of playing around with, until you find something else of course. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content, if you dig that type of stuff, link is down below. Once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you guys in the next one.